This upload is dedicated to my dad, James Nadolny. <laughs> Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to tonight's bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's bonus, shall we? All right, guys, today I have a subscriber from Washington, and I got an email about two weeks ago from him. And I, the second I read the email, I was taken back because of what it said. And I was like, I've got to get this guy on the show to share what has gone down with him. And tonight, I have Bill from Washington. Bill, how are you? I'm doing great, Jeff. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing good, and I appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know you're a busy guy to come on the show and share what went down with you. Um, you bet. So right now, I know you're a busy guy. I'm just going to turn the floor over to you, and you can share with us what happened. Okay. You're... The floor, well... floor is yours, my friend. Okay, well, I'll give you just a little background of who I am. I'm Bill from Wall Wall, Washington. I uh, raised cattle and farm my whole life. Uh, first thing I remember in life is Christmas, getting my pellet gun at four years old and uh, started hunting at four, shooting sparrows, things like that. And uh, I just had a knack for it. My grandfather was the first game commissioner in the state of Washington. Only one appointed by three consecutive governors, and uh, hunting was what we loved to do, hunting and fishing. Um, the only time I ever got off was to hunt. So I I loved hunting, and I got very good at it. And uh, I'll take you to what started this, is my son-in-law and I and two other people went up to our cabin, which is in Oregon, just on the Oregon side of the border okay. from Washington, right out of Milton Free Water, Oregon. And we went up to uh, look for morel mushrooms. And each of us had a kid or two with us. I had my granddaughter and my son-in-law next to me, and she was five years, four years old at the time. I think all the kids were around four. We all had pistols on us, because there are wolves up there and bear and stuff like that. So we did put pistols on our sides and and we started looking for mushrooms. It was a good day out, nice and sunny, and a little bit of cloud, but not bad. We started looking for mushrooms and spreading out, maybe 100, 200 yards apart, and just the place you couldn't see them. And, and uh, we're walking toward our bluff, and I smell something dead. And I yelled for my son in law to come over, and I said, You stay with my granddaughter, and let me go figure out what's going on. And so. I uh, followed that smell, maybe 100, 200 yards, and over toward the bluff, I came upon a dead cow elk. And uh, she was a big cow, good shape, uh, just in her prime. She's five, six years old by her teeth. And uh, I couldn't see any wounds on her. That's what was uh, strange to me. It looked like maybe her gut had been split on the other side. But there was no wounds like a wolf would 
would do uh, on the legs. They usually take them in the flank, in the uh, in the leg area, you know, to slow them down and finally pull them down. And uh, she was uh, killed within 24 hours of what I could tell. Uh, great shape. And like I said, just no wounds that I could see. And the brush around her was about two feet tall, feet tall, uh, not knocked down at all. Just a very strange sight. Uh, and so I looked over to my left and saw uh, what was a bull elk about 30 yards away. He was eaten all the way to the shoulder, right behind the shoulder. Uh, clean, no bone, no nothing, just straight straight through. Uh, no wounds on the front of him, no nothing else. He was a good bull, probably three, four years old. He has nubbins were just starting to come up velvet about five inches. And uh, the funny thing about that one was um, some of the hide was kind of rolled up, like it, it had been pulling on that hide, you know, back to get onto that meat. And hmm. Uh, it was real fresh too. It was just an odd sight because they usually don't kill two that close together. My first thought was maybe it was, a, it was two cougars, a breeding season maybe, and maybe two big cats, you know, took them down. But there was no biting in the neck because they'll jump on their back, grab them in the neck, but grab them by the end of the nose, pull the nose around, bite their neck. Just very strange. Right. No bones. Uh. You know, there was enough grass on there. You couldn't see no dirt, no nothing. We get a track brush and it just come, started to come up and stuff. And it had been real green, so you, I couldn't find a track. And uh, I just really bothered me the rest of the day. And uh, we went home and just kept bothering me. I, I called a friend and told him about what I'd seen. And I said, what do you think? And he goes, Bill, I don't, I don't quite know on that one, Bill. And so I, after about three days, I, I want to know what it was. So I, I uh, grabbed the tin gauge side by side. It's got a full and full choke on it. I put some, I, I grabbed some five inch shells. I think they are. And I had the old steel rounds and double odd buck. And I grabbed four of them, put them in a the pocket and, uh, grabbed my seven mm bag, my browning a bolt and, uh, grabbed eight rounds of 165 grainers. It's a real good bullet. Uh, used it before. It's just a real good bullet. And I shot this gun for a lot of years. Had an older scope on it, but I'd send it away to Leopold. Had a varmint dot put in it. I like the little dot when you're shooting out a long ways running. It doesn't co cover so much of the animal, and you can really hit what you want to hit. So I've been using that for a long time, a lot of bulls, a lot of bucks, bears, you name it. I've shot everything with it. And um, so I grab that, and then I grab a FNH pistol, uh, 5.728. It'll hold 21 rounds. That's one in the chamber. Yeah. And so I grabbed that, and I went up to the cabin, about a 45, 50-minute hour drive, uh, which would be a road called more uh, – uh, government mountain road and uh so i go up there and i don't know if i get out and open up the gate real quietly and bring my rig right inside the gate and it's you'll see you have a rig go by every hour or two you know and so there's a little noise down there they don't know where i parked and then, so i just pulled inside the gate a little ways and put my uh grab my shotgun and uh locked my rig up and snuck into where those elk were real slow, just real slow. And uh, I got in there, no smell, no nothing. The cow was gone. She was just gone. There was no, no bone, no nothing. No drag marks, no nothing. It's like something picked her up. Pardon me? Like almost like something just picked her up and carried yeah, her. Yeah, it just didn't make sense. There's yeah. no bone, no hide, no hair, no nothing. Wow. So then I went over to the bull and He's gone. And there was one little bone, about two inches long, just a little bone. That's all I could, it was a, it was a jaw bone. And uh, that's all I, I could find. And 
And I'm sitting down there, and I'm kind of knelt over and just kind of trying to suck all this information up. And I, I kind of hear this growl. And I, I instantly know it's over the bluff, and it's over the top. I've got a bluff in, uh, on our cabin that runs about, oh, maybe a mile long. It goes, goes straight down about 30, 40 yards, and then, then you got heavy rock and timber brush. And, and I heard this growl, and I'm, I'm like, what the hell? And I, I want to go over the bluff and look over, but it, if it's down far enough, I, you know, I can reach out 60, 70 yards with that thing pretty good, but I just don't feel right. And I just, just don't feel right. So I start backing up straight back and looking left, looking right, looking forward. And so I back up like that for hundred, 200 yards, just real slow. I just didn't feel right. And so I, after about 200 yards, I turn around, I highly hightail it back to the truck, and I put my leg in there, put my 57, 28 on the side, and I grab my 7 mm Magnum, but four of the gun, two in the chamber, one in the barrel, and uh, it'll hold four. And I put four shells in my right pocket, and uh, I know right where these animals are, so. I go through the timber and it goes down to get out. I want to get out to this long ridge it's to the left of it. And from there, I can see anything. It, it goes for two miles straight down and uh, real steep ridge. Of where I, you know, just sparsely tree after you get out of the timber and it's just a couple of trees and it starts going down real hard rock and everything else. So I, uh, I go down to that creek that goes by there and go up the other side and timber and go down the back side of that ridge and come around and I, I want to get up to this one place. And so I sneak up there and I got a red pack on, I got my spot and scope, my binoculars in there and I got a camel jacket on. And I walk up to that top of that ridge and just put my pack right there and get my gun on it. And I'm down looking around. I don't see nothing. It's a nice, pretty nice day out. It's about uh, three o'clock. I got, I don't know, a couple hours left of light. And uh, I'm just sitting there. I'm just looking. I don't see nothing, nothing going on. Don't see no animals. It's just quiet as hell out. And uh, not much of a breeze at all. Just hardly anything. And I'm there about a half hour. And I'm thinking, well, whatever it was, probably gone, maybe, and Maybe I better just go. Now you get my gun and start to stand up. And I look back down there under that bluff and I see something dark. It's just, it's kind of in the shade on the one side of the tree a little bit on the right side in the tall brush right there and stuff. And I see some movement. I know it's something. And so I, I get back down, get my gun back on there and I just, can see pieces of it and parts every once in a while. And I'm sitting there watching it going, oh, it's maybe a bear. I think it's a bear. You know, you know there's, most of the cougars are lighter colored gray, uh, black. I mean, they're not, they're not real black, black. A lot of them, you'll see them black like that, but most times they're just, they're not in my area, gray and things like that, but they're big. These, these wolves in my area are 225 pounders. They're the size of a deer. <laughs> not as tall, but their their heads are big, and um, so I'm I'm trying to figure out what the hell this thing is. And about that time, I get my you know I get my spot scope out, and I'm looking down there, and I'm like, oh, I think it's a big bear, you know, maybe a big bear. And all of a sudden, I see this kind of stand up out of the brush a little bit, and I I know how tall this brush is, so I see this kind of stand up, and I'm I'm looking at it, I go, what the fuck is that? And I could see ears on top and snout and everything else, and but it just don't look right to me. It just I could see the left arm, but I couldn't see the right arm using the brush there. And I'm thinking, okay, this is a wolf that he's got his feet up on a log there, you know, and that's it's got to be what I'm looking at here because your mind, you know, you're trying to think what the logical thing is here. And I'm I'm sitting there looking at it, and I'm like, oh shit, that thing's big. I mean, that's, that's wider 
than a wolf should be on the top. It's just not right. And I see it put his nose up a little bit to the left, and he sniffs once, two, three times. And I'm like, oh, fuck. I put my spot and soap down, get on my my gun. I got on nine power. That's as high as it'll go, but it, I'm really good at nine power. And uh, he sniffs three times. And then he zones right at me, just fucking right at me. I'm 200 yards, but he zones right at me. I, I tell looking through the scope, but hey, he's looking at me. And I'm just, what the hell? And it's just a slight breeze now. It's just a slight breeze on my back. I just, I'm like, oh, shit, I think I'm had here. They should just run off. And I'm looking at him, and, and he, after the stick, and he just, he just zoned right away. I mean, like I said, and as soon as he did that, I flipped the safety off. And I could see him starting to growl. I could, I could almost hear it growl. I could see his, his uh, mouth open. I could see the teeth. And that's what really got me. I them eye teeth, <clears throat> excuse me, on the left and right were really big. I just really big. I just it just didn't look right. It shouldn't be quite that big. But I, I just kept thinking, man, that's the biggest fucking wolf in the world. And as soon as he let out that growl, I squeezed off. And that frickin' magnum just roared. And I, I'm one of them guys that I was taught real early, as soon as you shoot, you keep your head on that, on that scope. See where that bullet hits. Because that will tell you a lot. And the bullet hit him. I couldn't see his full, what would be his right shoulder. I, it, I could see the top, about four inches of it. And then the brush was there. And from about the middle over, I could see on his left side. And I could see the arm out there. And I mean, when I took the shot, I hit him a little high. <clears throat> And he hit him that left shoulder, his left shoulder, and he went back. And, and I seen his come back a little bit. And he fucking looked right at me and start to roar again. And as soon as he did that, I knew what I'd done wrong the first time. <laughs> and I took the shot. And I hit him right down the row of teeth. When I got back on him, I seen slobber and teeth go up. And <clears throat> I think I hit him right to his bottom jaw on the right side. Took out that row of teeth, and his head flopped back a little bit and a little bit to the left, and he went right down. And I'm going, what the fuck is that? I'm either in a lot of trouble with the feds here, because I shot a wolf, or I shot something I don't know what the hell is. Right. I'm still trying to figure out what the hell this thing is. And I stand up. Put another round in the in the in the chamber in the gun, and at about that time, out comes two running out of that brush above it. They're just a little bit above that, and here the first one runs out. He's black, and, and the other one's brownish, and he's right below him. But they're about thirty yards apart, and they're running toward that creek that I got across. And I instantly know they're either running out of the country, going to go up that draw where that creek comes down. Or they're going to come around to me because that's what animals do in this area right there. And I'm trying to figure out what the hell I should do here. But, and and I, as soon as they run out, I, I sat down real quick because that's what I always do. I always sit down. I like shooting from a sitting position if I can. That's my best way. And I sit down and get on the first one, and he is running so damn fast. Then I take the shot and I hit right behind him. And and I don't miss at 150 yards running full bore. I, I mean, I just don't do it. But, but this thing's running so damn fast, I hit right behind him because I seen the bullet hit. And I crank another round in, and I can tell right there that I'm not going to be able to get on that first one. He's going to hit that timber before I can get a shot at him. So I get on the one below him, and I sh put just a little more ahead than I did before, and I shot, and I... I think I hit him in the rear end somewhere. I don't, I, I thought I saw him just move a little. I couldn't, I mean, it wasn't like I, you know, that was a normal deer or something else. It, it had really screwed him up and um, just made a little movement. So I'm, I'm, I get up and I, I'm like, oh shit. So I grab my other shells in my pocket, my other four, and I cram them in the gun and 
I'm thinking of Jesus Christ. Are they going to come out right here, like 50 yards from me, running at full bore at me? Or, you know, it's maybe 60 yards. And I kept backing up on that ridge. And, and I finally got to the place where it was just one tree there because that's, it'd be like one tree and it'd be 20 yards and one tree and 20 yards. And I just left my pack and I backed up a bunch and got by that last tree on that ridge because there was no more way to go. I can't get down to take me an hour and a half of running to get to the bottom or an hour. It's just, there's just no way out. I can't get out that way. I can't do it. It's just, it's the last, you know, thing for me here. And, and so I back up real fast into that tree, leave the pack on the ground, and I turn my scope from nine to four. Because I know if they come out, they're going to be close. They're going to they're be close. So I turn my scope down real quick, and I back up to that tree. And I'm, I get on the left side, well, as I look back toward the timber up the ridge. And I'm on the left side, and I'm looking left, looking right. And, and I don't think nothing, they can't come from behind me. And it's just... No way. And I didn't think they'd come from the right because it's a big open uh, kind of clearing on the right side where it's not so steep on that ridge. And they're going to come either right, you know, right at me on the ridge or come around on the left side here where the trail is. And so I'm sitting there going, what the hell am I going to do here? And I'm also thinking, did I shoot a wolf? Am I in a lot of trouble here? The ones I seen running across that hillside, they didn't look like wolves. They just, I'm still trying to figure out what's, what these are. And, and so I'm sitting there, and it had been 45 seconds, 50 seconds. And I'm sitting there looking left and looking right, looking ahead of me, and I see something, some movement. And it was him going up from, from being on all fours to, go, to stand up on two legs. And he wow. stood up. On the shaded side of the tree, which me looking up the ridge would be on the right side of that tree. And I see him go up. That's what, if, if I wouldn't have seen him go up, I, I don't know if I'd have seen him like that. He was real black, so he kind of showed up that way. But, you know, he got up next to that tree, and everything's dark, and it's hard to see. And But I seen him go up. And so I've already got my gun up against that tree. I'm standing up there, and the tree's about... I don't know, eight inches across, probably nine inches across. It ain't a very big pine. And I'm sitting there, and when he went up, I put it right on him. And I think I saw his head kind of go a little, look a little to the bit to the right. I think he was looking at my pack on that ridge there. And it would be between us, but my left or his right. And I think I see him look at my pack, and then he kind of looks back at me, and I about that time. I squeeze it off, and he's, I think he's just starting to go down to all fours, maybe, or something, because it, I, I thought I saw his head start to come down a little bit. But I shoot, and gun like a four, it just roars. Boom! And he makes this little jump forward, like he's, I thought he was going to go down to all fours, but he made this little thing, and then he kind of popped up in the air and fucking goes right down and slams his head into the ground and his left shoulder. Just slam it into the ground. I could almost feel it hit the ground and from where I was at. And he, he rolls over, and then he starts kicking with his front legs and his back legs at the same time, like kick, kick, kick. And they're, they're doing it together. Like I've seen animals do it when they die and stuff like that. And I knew I hit him hard. I mean, that was only like 60 yards, you know. It just it's easy. And... But he slams into the ground, rolls over, and kind of rolls down the hill. He's, he's kicking, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? That thing was eight foot standing up. I'm like, there's no fucking way. There's no way in God's earth that a wolf could learn how to do that. And I'm trying to still feel, feel like, what the fuck I'm looking at? And I'm a big El Helsing fan. I love, always loved vampire movies and werewolf movies and they were bleed in them but you know i liked them like the movies action movies and shit like that but that damn thing looked like a hell helsing fucking werewolf you know he's three four feet across the top and after i got over there but so i i'm sitting there i'm just he knocks him down slams his head left shoulder in the ground he rolls over and kind of kicks down the hill and, and ends up stopping in some brush on the left side of that ridge and He's kind of kicking a little bit, not as much, and 
And I'm sitting there thinking, what the fuck? There's got to be another one around here. And I'm just going, oh, shit. And so I, I kind of bend down a little bit, and I'm just sitting there. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm going, I, God, I know that thing. other thing's got to be here somewhere. And I, I kind of take a step to my left and look over that ridge where that rock is. And I look down there, and right above the brush, down below me, maybe 50 yards, I see the back of one. He's walking to my left, trying to get around me. He's trying to hook around that ridge to get behind me. And I'm just like, oh, fuck. Didn't like the shot. And I picked up a rock, and I threw it behind him. And it was about the size of a baseball. And I threw it about 20 yards behind him. Fuck it, makes a clang on the rocks and shit. And he stands up and turns around, and I let him have it right in the side of the head. Boom! And he just goes right down. I I, I see him roll down the hill, and that was it. He, no movement, and after that, no nothing, no kicking. I'm just, whoa! What the fuck? And I'm, I'm like, shit, I got two shells left, and I got them. And I'm just like, what the hell? I can't wait to get a picture of this and bring some people up here. And, and uh, I walk over. And I want to make, I want to see what the hell I'm shooting here because I, I don't want to be in trouble either with the feds and shooting a wolf. And I walk over there and his feet are kind of downhill a little bit at three quarters and he's laying on his left side. I can see the left or the right paw or leg or whatever they want you want to call it. And I his mouth was open and I hit him right above the left eye on the inside because it kind of popped his eye out a little bit. Mm. There's some blood there and I and uh, I'm like, what the hell is that? And I put my foot on him and try to roll him over a little bit, and I can't even do that. And I'm like, what the hell? This thing's got to be 450 pounds. I mean, this is as big as a bear. And I'm I'm sitting there looking at this thing. I I, I looked at the claws, and they're all three, three and a half, maybe four inches. Some of them kind of chipped some of them. And, and I'm looking at that, and I'm looking at his face. I could hardly look at anything else because – the teeth, it just stood out. I'm like, whoa, that is a fucking killing machine. I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. And I left my phone at the car, and I'm I'm sitting there thinking, what the hell am I going to do here? And I'm going, these ain't wolves, because wolves ain't, eat, you know, that they can't stand up, first of all. They just, they just can't do it. And I'd never heard of a dog man or anything like that. And so... I'm thinking, what the hell is this? I'm going to get me a big stick up here above me and by the timber line. I'm going to roll this thing over. And uh, so I, I go up to the ridge top there, and I'm standing there with my rifle, and I hear this kind of howl a long ways away. It looked like over on Blaylock, which they call Blaylock. And that'd be the, I think, the south fork of the wall wall down below me. And, and I'm sitting there looking, I'm sitting there looking, and I'm, going, what the hell was that? And I've only heard one wolf howl during the day. And this one just sounded different. And all of a sudden, I'm looking way down below me, and I see two of them damn things running right out of the creek bottom, right above the timber, coming around. And they'd, they'd hit a little timber pocket, and I'd see them go in there. They'd come out, and they just they were coming up my way. And I couldn't tell if they were going to come up my ridge when they got there. Or they're going to cut them up that basin. And I instantly feel fear. I have never felt fear except once when I got chased by a bear and I ended up slapping it in the face. And luckily got a, it all worked out all right. But uh, they're coming out of that bottom and they are running like mad. And it would take an elk or a deer to get, I mean, 15 minutes to get up there, even if they could run that hard, you know, real hard, full bore up that so I'm I'm thinking what the hell and I'm I'm looking at my gun I open it up I got I got I got two rounds left and I'm thinking I'm I'm in trouble here uh, I don't know if I can take these down running with two shots I everything was wrong felt wrong everything was wrong and I wanted in my truck at that moment right now. <laughs> So I uh, grab my pack and I run like a baby. And I run down to that creek, which only takes me going sideways about a minute. You now, a minute and a half, I was running. And I hit that bottom and I started going up that trail to the cabin. And, 
and I'm going as fast as I can. And I get up to the cabin and I puke because I push myself so hard. And I've done that a couple times in my life hunting. And I just, you know, it was too much. And I just, I just puked. And, uh, then I, then I start running again. And I run down to my truck, which is probably 300, 400 yards down toward the main road. And I, I jump in that sucker and I turn around and I was going to leave the gate open and just go. But I, I just, I just didn't want to do that. I just didn't want somebody coming in and breaking into our cabin and shit. So I, I pulled outside the gate. I ran. I shut the gate and I take off and I go, I'm going about 40 miles an hour for the first two miles. I, I was hauling ass. So tired to hit him and it's steep and it, everything else. I shouldn't have been going that fast. And I got about two miles down the hill and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do here. Who do I call? And who do I try to explain this to, you know, DNR, state police, my friends, what the hell do I do here? And I, I instantly know that if I get a hold of the DNR or police in Vales, they're going to have me go back up there and they're not going to let me have a weapon. Yeah. Now I had no, I, I just, I just didn't want to go back mm. up there in the first place. And I didn't want to go back up there with no weapon. And, um, so I come home and this, you can believe this, but I Googled real walking wolf and fucking up comes one of your stations. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what's this? And I listened to one or two of those. And then I get one on there with Victor. And as soon as I heard him talk for five minutes, I knew he was a truthful man. And he was a like me. He was just my type of person. Somebody that I could work with and, and everything. I, I just knew. And I instantly knew after I heard a couple of your broadcasts and his and him being on it, that somebody knew about this, this stuff. And, and I, I'm trying to think what the hell they know about this stuff, but they're not saying nothing. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I should do. And so I, I just, for the first couple of days, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Right. And, uh, I'm starting to think if it was some type of hybrid wolf or something, I'm, I'm going to be in trouble. I left my rounds up there on that hillside and I am, I am freaking out. And I think on the fourth day I get in my rig and I would grab my 10 gauge and I grab my scar, put a hundred round drum on her, gave me a 57. And I go up there and I drive right up to the cabin and I, I haul my ass out to that ridge and I picked up all my shells. And then I run back to the cabin and I come home and I threw one out the window about every two miles. And I come home and I hadn't been up there getting mushrooms. I just kind of discouraged everybody from going up there. Oh, I can't go. It's not go good. Everybody's been up there. There's no mushrooms, blah, blah, blah. Right. Cause I'm afraid that I, my son in law, he just started hunting five, six years ago and I'm teaching him everything. He's killed some beautiful bucks up there, but I didn't want him to go up there. I just didn't want him to go up there. I didn't want my grandchildren up there and just really bothered me and, and, uh, come home and never told anybody until about two years later. I'm talking to my son in law. He goes up there a lot. He can't hear very good. So uh, I'm talking to him, and I tell him, okay, I'm going to tell you something, and you're not going to believe me, but I'm going to tell you, and he, I'm not going to tell him. going to tell you once. We ain't going to talk about it no more. And so I tell him the story, and he gets a funny look on his face, and he said, well, I got a call from a friend that, you know, has ground up there, big, big grower, a big uh, cattleman, maybe, and uh, said he'd been seeing some black helicopters flying around that huge canyon in front of our cabin. And he said they're flying awful low and they're going back and forth and just something that they're not going to do for wolves right here. They're just, it was not. And uh, right then I knew something was wrong. And when I went back up, like, Shell, that that dog man was gone. Right. He was not there, and uh, I just couldn't believe it. I I stopped going up there. Uh, I haven't been up there in 
couple of years now. I just don't like the mountains that much anymore. I live in Walla Walla, and I can look it out my window and see all the mountains about 10 miles away. And I just put a whole new feeling for going into the mountains. Uh, uh, after I heard that they could track you somewhat, I did have an experience here at the house that bothered me a little bit. I was out by the pool one night, and I heard something. I didn't know what it was. And I went in and got my 10-gauge, looked around, didn't see nothing. The next morning, I go out in the gate in the back of my pool area. There's a big graded gate, metal rods going down. And when I went out there, those metal rods were spread apart. Some either put its head in there and, and spread that open, or I don't know. what. It just don't make sense. It just, there's no way. And so that got me thinking that maybe they know where I'm at. And uh, I am selling my house and uh, and downsize, but uh, it's just a whole new experience. I just, uh, you know, I just uh, put fear into me. And I, 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 I'm one of them guys that never been scared of anybody, especially if I had a gun in my hand. Yeah, like when you and you I, know, I was talking. like one of those. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I, I can take anything down in this world. Yeah, I knew it. I knew I was that good, and my nerves were that good. I, I knew it. And uh, it just totally reshaped my world. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm going to go up there this spring. Right now, it's just you can't even get in there. Too much snow. But I'm going to go up there this spring. I'm going to go up by myself. I don't want nobody with me. I don't want to have to worry about somebody else. And I'm going to go up and I'm going to make sure those other two are not there. I, I, I don't want them there. I don't want, I don't want them around my kids or my grandchildren. And... Uh, I just don't want to wreck his world, and uh, I'm going to go take care of it. I'll I'll take care of it. I'll die trying. I I've had it with it. If I can do that, I think I can clear my mind and maybe feel better about going to the mountains. Yeah. But uh, no. But I know where I know where to set it up. I know every inch of that ground, and uh, I've got a little bit of advantage there. And uh, I truly believe that you have to hit him in the head. I think anything in the business, you got a 50 cal or something, something good size. I don't know in the body with a 300 ultra mag, you know, maybe, I maybe don't know. Or they, something like that. Yeah. Well, they seem to be awful hard skinned or something. I, I don't quite understand that part. Uh, it don't make sense to me, but I hit the, hit the first one pretty damn hard in the shoulder. I, if that was a wolf, he'd gone down, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was none of that shit. Now, just so and, everyone uh, knows, I just want to, just so everyone knows, Bill is not, like, this guy is a rancher. He's he's raised cattle his entire life. He's had to take cattle out of the mountains in the dark on horseback. Um, and Thousands of, thousands of times. By doing thousands. this. I, 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 all my ground goes around the Mill Creek watershed. And so I, I was the only guy for years that could go into the Mill Creek watershed on horse anytime I wanted. Unarmed. And I knew it like the back of my hand. Unarmed, right? Unarmed, yes. Most of the time, unless it was, you know, I was looking for coyotes to take the pelts off, or it was deer season or elk season, and then I'd always carry a gun on the scabbard. But three quarters of the time, I never had a weapon. Right. Never. And I said to him when we were talking, I said, Bill, just imagine being out there, how many times one of these things were near you when you were oh, unarmed. Oh, had to be. You know? Had to be. It's, it's insane. Well, my horse, you know, we made a lot of noise, you know, a lot of steep country. And, you know, a lot of the time I'd have to get off and lead the horse, you know, because it's that steep. And, uh, you know, I've had thousands and thousands of miles and hours in the mountains by myself or with my hired man riding, getting cattle out. I'd ride about a month every year, getting them out, month and a half. And uh, nothing ever scared me. Nothing right. ever. I, you know, bears didn't scare me. It just... Nothing scared me. I knew with a gun, you know, and nothing would take me and my horse. You know, I've seen cougars fighting, rolling down the hill. And like I told you before, I seen one come out, kill one of my cows and drag it up the hill, a bear. And he was ended up get, being about 550 pounds. He was one of the biggest bear we ever seen in this country. But he, he, I don't know what he was dragging him uphill for, <laughs> but he wanted him to uphill for some reason on that open hillside. And I was too far to yell and I didn't have no gun. So 
he got a free meal on me on that day. Now, something that you mentioned to me, um, there's some loggers that are buying some property up there, and one of them had, had asked you a kind of a weird question um, about yeah. going up on that mountain. What, what was that? A, like, what do you feel? Well, about I was up there after that, it was about a year later, and I kind of went over to that same place where those elk were, and his his line was about, I don't know, 50 yards to my right, and and uh, he was there on his bike, him riding up with another guy, and he come up to me and asked me, he goes, you been hunting out on that ridge and shooting? And I said, no. And he said, you sure? And I said, no, I have been up here in a year. And uh, we left it at that. He knew I, I would tell the truth, even if I was out there shooting, I'd tell him. Right. And uh, it was just kind of an odd deal, and he just looked at me funny and, and see, they clear cut everything to my property. So my, my ground starts with heavy timber and anything that's out there feeding, they're going to walk over and get to that clear cut and say, no, we'll stay on this side. We got all this feed and trees to hide behind and everything else over here. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of, a lot of, uh, we got some wolves in the area and everything else now, but yeah. this thing here was no wolf. Yeah. It, it, it just wasn't a wolf. It just wasn't a wolf. Yeah. I don't, I tell you the truth, I don't know what it was. You know, I at the time I I had no idea. You know, until I got a hold of your your uh, website, I I had I didn't know what a dog I didn't know it was a dog man around. Right. I had like, no idea. You said like that. And if these things are out, I tell you they're they're a killing machine. They're just made to kill. Yeah. Uh, if you're blow if you're blow Joe out there camping and walk along with a pistol on your side. I, uh, you know, I suggest you basically save that last shell for yourself because, you know, if not, you're going to get ripped up real hard. But when those two you, know, you, flanking can, you, you can take your shots at them, but I, I don't know. I think you got to hit them in the head. Right. When they were flanking you, could you hear them? Were they being loud? No, through? never. He was he was only about 50 yards down to my left over the ridge there. And I, I'm an A thing. Yeah. And I, I looked over there and that's the one that was trying to flank me. He was trying to get around my left and yeah. get around behind me. And if I wouldn't have seen him. In another 15 seconds, he'd have been around behind me. Wow. And I did never, never look on that open hill behind me because it just, just, you know, animals don't do that. Yeah. That's another thing. And, I, mean, uh, like you said. I, got, I got, I got lucky. I admit I got, I got lucky, but I'm also a good shot. And that, I think that saved the day for me. Yeah. But that just gives more credence to, to, to them being a killing machine, you know? I yeah. Mean, yeah. That's thick wood. Like I've been on said. I've been on the Wall Walk Cattle Motor I was on the mm-hmm. Wall Cattle Motor Board of Directors for nineteen years. I'm not an idiot. Right. I, you know, I know what kind of animals are around here and that was not anything I've ever seen before. It was totally off the books. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this thing was. Now, I don't know what it was. Now any just a, a stupid not a stupid question, because no question's stupid, but yeah. when that thing stood up and you saw it. Um, did Sasquatch or anything pop into your head? Did you, did you think about that? No, because I could see the two ears on the top. Okay. And he had his arm, I think around the tree or had his, maybe had his arm on the tree, his right arm. Yeah. I couldn't see it, but I just had a feeling that he was using that tree to, you know, as a, as try to get behind a little bit. And, but if, you know, he was on the shaded side. If I wouldn't have seen him move up, I, I, I wouldn't have seen him for a little bit longer. That's, that's insane. I, I just wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. And uh, I'll tell you what, they're big. I, I think if you saw one in the wild, you'd, you'd freeze. I think people would freeze. Yeah. And that, by, by freezing down, you're going you're, you're gonna to lose your life. I'm glad I was in a car when that one came out of the woods. Oh, that boy. I saw. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, because if not, if they make up their mind up, they're, you know, they're going to come. They're coming. Well, that's you yeah. know they're killing out. They're a killing machine. They're, they're smart. They're like Jurassic Park all over again. Yeah, very smart too. Like you know, oh. when, when I had my well, encounter. he wouldn't have been coming around behind me if he wasn't smart. I knew, I knew that. Yeah. But when I was, I got done, I I was that's what really freaked me out is they were so smart. Yeah. And and to zoom on right where I was, that that was another thing. That that like, gun roared. I I didn't think he'd. Get the other two i knew the other one i mean I, I didn't know the other two were there huh. yeah. and but he after he made them smell i could see him smell air i knew you know as soon as he looked at me that he he he, he knew where i was he, he was smart real smart now do you have any um 
Are there any other like ranchers or farmers that you talk to that have, has anybody ever like mentioned anything no. like this to the you? The only thing is I talked to the girl that I raised cattle next to him my whole life. Very truthful person. I asked her a couple of years ago, you, you know, had any problems with wolves this year? And she said, well, she was up getting cattle out, looked around that long, big ridge. And she said, she's seen a, a wolf chasing a, one of her cows. And she never had no gun and she's too far away, but she said, man, there was a big wolf and that cow fast as it could. And that thing was right on its ass. She said, I think it got one of my cows. Wow. And she lost, I don't know if they lost something like one neighbor lost eight. And that's just unheard of. I, I, long time ago, I'd lose one a year, maybe or two or something, you know, but, but I wouldn't lose eight, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. uh, it, what bothered me, I, I when I got home, when I after I seen the elk, I was mad. I, I was, I, I was wondering what the hell did it, but I was mad because I thought that they had killed too much. I thought, you know, if you want one, kill one, eat it, but don't you? You're killing more animals that you need. Right. Um, but you know, after I got up there, I seen they eat it all. I guess they need more. But uh, at the time, I was just kind of mad. I was like, "You bastard wolves! You know, you some bitches!" Yeah. And and I just. You know, for the first day, I kept thinking, no, it's got to be a cougar kill. It's got to be a cougar kill. But nothing felt right on it. It just it didn't feel right. Well, like you said, and, there was no know, no marks on the back or the haunches. The no. Neck. Yeah, there uh-uh, was no... Nothing. Not a mark. Not a mark. That's insane. Couldn't understand it. Never seen it like it before. Hmm. And the way it was eaten off, that bull was eaten off. It was, he had his front legs there. But right behind them legs, that thing was just sheared straight off like somebody took a chainsaw. Wow. It was just, it was just so strange, and there were, you know, no hot, no other bones there at all, you know. Just a strange thing. They, they usually hone in on one elk and kill it, knock it down. Yeah. Well, this bull was too close to this other cow. They shouldn't have been taking two at the same time. They usually don't do that. They just won't. They, most of the time, they always try to get that one down first. And then, if there's another one around looking, oh, they're gonna take it. But it was just such an eerie, weird feeling I got from from the start. Yeah. As soon as I walked upon it, within fifteen seconds after looking at it over, and, I knew something was. It was something I'd never seen before. And regardless, elk are not a small animal, either. They're big. I mean, they're it's... very big animal. Deer, you know, but an elk, they're big. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're big, and you get a bull. He, I mean, he was big. I could tell by his front shoulders. He was in good shape. He. His neck looked good. He he was his teeth were great. He he uh and I just couldn't understand how they could get a cow and then a full grown bull down too. Yeah, and they're fearless too. Elk are fearless. They're not afraid of much. I mean yeah, no, they'll they'll <laughs> they'll turn a fight if they have to. Yeah. And but a wolf a wolf is a, a real killer. He'll 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 knock them down, they'll flank them, flank them, flank them until they can they can't run, then they'll get them down and when they first start off, one will run it until he gets tired. Then another one will run it until he gets tired. And finally, the other going to get tired. Yeah. The other one's a little behind, just catching up. Well, you know, they flank it, flank it, and get it down. And then a wolf, he'll start eating on them with the cow still alive. They don't kill them unless they die from a shock, which they'll do real quick and other things. But uh, they'll start eating on the hind quarter with the with the cow bringing her head up up off the ground and going down, up, down, up. They'll, they'll eat them. Yeah. Real wildlife, and, wildlife, and and the 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 prey, predator hunts are very uh, very aggressive and not not something for the light of heart. That's for sure. No, no, no. But, you know, once you've you've been a you know, I I was taught from an early age. You know, like about six, my dad took him out and said, "Hey, this calf's gonna die. It's your job for now on to take care of him if they have to. You know, they ain't gonna make it, Billy. We just." We don't want them to suffer. We, you know, we don't. We just don't. So he taught me how to shoot cattle in the head, and that was my job. And you know, I'd take care of a calf for two weeks, giving it milk, and take a bad turn. And I'd have to shoot it. You know, it was a tough deal. Yeah. But that was my that was my job. And uh, you know, I got I got tough real quick, real early. And uh, but I knew I had so, I was something special with a gun. I just knew it from the start, and that's why nothing ever scared me. It, it, and then. I didn't think there was anything up there that could really scare me that bad. Right. But I, if I, if what I know now, I wouldn't go up there without being so armed up that, you know, I would be armed up. Yeah, absolutely. I, I won't even go. I won't. Even, I wouldn't even go from my cabin out to the outhouse without carrying my weapon no more. I just, I just wouldn't. 
It's just that's what it's done to me. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Bill, do me a favor. Don't hang up um, when we end the okay. interview. I want to talk to you for a few minutes after. Is there anything that you'd like to say to to the subscribers that are listening? I'd say, you know, just be careful. You know, if everything gets quiet, look around you. Be careful. Uh, don't try not to go in the woods by yourself. And uh, try to carry a weapon. Know how to use it. And uh, just have fun. It's one of the millions of a chance to run into one. I, I've been up there that long. I, my, my number came up. Yeah. But most people I don't think will ever run into them. Uh, I think, you know, Bigfoot will run into uh, is If you do, it's just a freak deal. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you still want to have fun. Uh, you can see what it's done to me. And you really just don't want to see them. So uh, yeah. I think what I've heard is you can just kind of don't look at them. Just walk away. And uh, most of them will leave you alone. They might be curious, whatever. Unless uh, one's really pissed off and he's made up his mind that, you know, he's coming. Then you better get your shit together real fast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, buddy. Well, it was great talking to you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. When you go up this spring, keep me in the loop. I'd like to know what's going I, on. I will. I will. I, I'll keep in the loop. You'll be the first person I... I send a picture too, buddy. I appreciate it. I'll talk and to you I'll, soon. I'll keep my phone on me this time so I can't get pictures. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'll yeah. Bring a GoPro yeah. or something with you. Hi, dear. Yeah, I always, always have some, something. I just didn't think, thought I needed it that day. And, yep. and uh, I sure wish I did. When you get out of the woods, yeah. hide that SD card too. Get that SD card yeah. out of there as fast as yeah, possible. Well, <laughs> what was so weird is that as soon as I sent you that email the other day, about four days later, my phone got hacked. Yeah, and I took strange. it into the guy that works there. He's a good friend of mine. He's a genius on these. And he worked for four hours on it and still couldn't figure it out. He said, Bill, I can't figure out what, how this hack got in there, what it is. He goes, I've never seen anything like it before. And, the email, and so I had to get a brand new phone. And, yeah, and the and, email uh, friggin' said straight up, Jeff, I had a yeah. shootout with one of these. I killed one. Yeah. Something, you know. Yeah. And then, then I, I emailed you back a couple days later. And you're like, hey, I just got my phone back, got a new phone, and then yeah. you told me what happened. And so, yeah, just yeah, you kind of kind of made me kind of made me think a little bit, a little bit. about it. Now, you know, uh, I'd say I'd say it's an eighty percent chance that I did get hacked by some type of agency or something else. See, this guy said that this whoever did it really knew what the hell they were doing. Yeah. Especially with the black helicopters around your property afterwards. And Very stuff. strange. Things are strange, yeah. Absolutely. Very strange. Yeah, usually, I mean, I haven't seen a helicopter in there for 30 years, and that one came over to Blaylock and come down and had a net underneath, and it dropped out a bear. And this bear rolled down the hill and got up and was pissed off. <laughs> and he had a big hump on his back. And I remember me and my brother-in-law going, that looks like a grizzly. They're not supposed to be putting grizzlies in here. But we found out through the game department, because my grandpa, all his connections, that they were bringing problem bears in here from like Yellowstone and shit and dropping them off. Wow. And and we put a stop to that. We found out, we got on the game department, and uh, we stopped that. But that's the only time I ever saw a helicopter in there. That's crazy. That's crazy. And that was an odd, that was just an odd deal right there, to have them dropping a bear out of a netting. Yeah, definitely is. <laughs> and they dropped him in some place that nobody ever goes. Nobody ever hunts. They'll hunt it for 40 years. They never see whatever goes in there. If it stays there, they'll never see it. Right. Ever. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. So, All right, yeah, buddy. well, it was wonderful talking to you, Jeff. It was. I Stay on the line, though. I'm going to end okay. the interview. All right. Thank you, okay. Bill. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. This interview happens to be one of my dad's favorite interviews that I've ever done on the channel. Um, he loves this one and he loves the guide from Idaho. Both interviews are his favorites and I think it has everything to do with the outdoors, uh, being on horseback, you know, living, living that dream. Um, my dad retired from the Navy and then after that, retired from a paper mill. So he didn't have time to, you know, uh, experience 
something like that, something that he uh, always wanted to do, probably uh, since a young boy. So um, this this interview is dedicated to my dad. And uh, anyway, um, thank you for supporting the channel. Your support is what makes this channel special and what continues to make it grow and go. Uh, please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on your children, your pets, your family, and friends. These creatures are out there. They are real. They're dangerous. Share this information with the people you love, and it may keep them safe someday. Anyway, with that being said, never stop asking questions. Never stop searching for answers. God bless.